Hello everyone, welcome to Professor 3 Mac. I hope you are learning some good stuff from my channel. For today's video, I have come up with a, with a solution for a problem which was asked by, the, by one of the subscribers. And the question was based on the fact that in the NAN indentation simulation uh, tutorial which I created, we use the displacement control test. And in such cases, at times you want to get, extract the values of the forces which are there in the model when the indenter really is pushed into the sample and in real experiments you can measure the forces using load cells so i just will create a very simple model i will apply a displacement boundary condition and then i will show you how you can actually measure the reaction forces or calculate the reaction forces in the model and then you can compare it with your experiments so i will show you two different ways and again it's your choice which way which way you want really want to go for okay so let's jump into it so I will create first a part 3D extrusion and I will create a cube. I will keep the model as simple as possible. So it's a one by one by one. It should be one by one by one. Five by five by five cube, sorry. Because I think the dimensions are five. So in the other dimension. So now it's a cube, you see. And now next is the property. So I'm going to, I'm assuming everything is modeled in millimeters. So I'm going to define the material properties to be in megapascals, let's say of steel, to 210 meg, thousand megapascal. And then Poisson's ratio of 0.233, 0.33, sorry. And then create a section and then assign the section to this part. So that's it. And then I will go to the assembly and I will instance the part here, which is no problems, then I create a static step. You can, but this the same thing can work for dynamic step as well. Total time is, period is one. Maximum number of increments, 10,000, my favorite number, and also minimum in, in initial increment size to be 0.1, and the maximum to be 0.1, so I should at least get 10 number of increments. I am, so the, in the first case, we're gonna define the boundary condition directly on the surface, and I will show you how to extract the values, and in the second case, I will show you how to create a reference point, couple it with the surface and get the value directly from that reference point. So again, you can you can decide which value, which method you really want to use. So displacement boundary condition, displacements. I will apply, let's say a displacement boundary condition on this surface. I'm gonna fix it in all three directions for this case. And I will also fix the surface in y and z direction and i will only apply displacement in x direction and so that's what i'm going to do here now that's it u1 u2 u3 and for u1 i will give a value of let's say minus 0 point or minus one maybe minus one okay and then it should be like this so now i will create a mesh for mesh i will use a mesh size of five you to really add the nodal values at the end and I will show you what I mean by that. And then I mash it. That's my mash. Emily. I go to the job. I will create a job. I call it force extraction. Continue. I will always love to do go with full precision and submit. It should not take long because it's a one element model and it's a static, quasi static case. So if you now look at that, how it looks like, so you see, it's it ran in no time, although my system is very slow still. And now you see how it looks like, so it has compressed in this direction. Now if I want to get the forces, so I will just bring the forces up in X direction and you see the maximum forces would be somewhere in these areas. So wherever I'm applying displacement boundary condition, I will get the values on those nodes. So in this case, we apply displacement boundary condition on this surface. So what I will do, I will create a query, probe values, and I will ask to get the values for nodes because forces and displacement are nodal quantities. Stresses are elemental quantities. So I'm getting those values here and you see they are very much the same in this case, but for a bigger model with complex model, you will have different values here. And then what you have to do, it's very really simple. You just add them together. So four, three, three, nine, two, zero times four. And that's your total force, which is acting 
on your which is which is which you have applied to get that displacement which is there right now which was 0. point uh, which you can check here if you if you go okay so you go back and you see and this is the displacement we have applied minus 1.0 okay now next step is basically to compare the same value I, I hope i have saved it yeah so this is the value right so keep this in mind so that this is the final value we had uh, from this open yeah okay so now what i will do i will go to interaction module and now i will create a reference point for so tools reference point and i will create a reference point let's say 2.5 okay this is going somewhere inside the model so we need to bring it outside in x direction so i will go back to the assembly features and then reference point and i will say edit and now i can play around with this parameter here so i have to move in x direction so let's move it to at a distance of 5 so let's make it 7.5 here apply and you see now it has come here because we are pushing in this direction and now what i will do i will click in the interaction i will create a constraint coupling it will ask us to select a control point which is this control point and then it will ask us to select a surface and this is the surface which we are coupling with this control point and i'm going to constrain all the degrees of freedom as i did for the actual boundary condition case and now I go to the loading and now I will remove this loading from this to the control point here. So I'll say select and viewport, this one, done. And now you will see this displacement boundary conditions are moved to this thing here. What I do, I just go to job, submit again. And if everything is defined correctly, then you should be quickly able to solve this out, this problem. So you see it is solved in no time. Results should look very similar to what you saw previously. Reaction forces, reaction force one, and you see these are the forces here. And in this case, the reaction force should be measured at this reference point. So I think the easier way, because you don't see it right now here, you can bring it on the screen, but the simplest way what I do is I just go XY data manager, create field output. And then I say, okay, I let unique nodal, and then reaction force in X direction, and then add it internal sets, node sets, sorry. And then you can highlight and then you can see if it, when, whichever is this. So this is your reference point, for example. So I just plot. And now this is the value. This is the maximum value. So if I now query this curve and probe value, and if I probe it here, and you see it's very much the same as what we calculated for the case where we applied the displacement boundary condition on the surface. So you can do it through surface or you can do it through reference point. So I hope this made sense. If you really learned something out of it, then please do consider liking this video and also subscribing to my channel. Any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much and bye for now.